Have you ever walked out of a training session at school or at work and thought, I really didn't retain any of that information? Maybe you've been the instructor standing in front of everybody in a classroom setting, looking at all the faces and knowing that none of that material is gonna stick. Training is really hard by nature, but you can make it easier on yourself and others if you centralize your training around a tool or a dedicated space at your organization. Once you do that, you can look at the tools and features that help leverage good training towards your training model. Let's dive in and figure out how to do it with Microsoft Teams. We all know that training is chaotic by nature and executing good training is an art. But in reality, it's all about how you set up your training in the first place that makes it so impactful. In this video, I wanna show you how you can use Microsoft Teams as a dedicated place to set up where training happens, how to organize your users and your materials, and use all the features to make your training go further. So in this video, we're using Teams a lot, and if you're still pretty new to Teams, we have an intro video to Teams for Beginners. You can click that down below. That might get you a little bit more oriented before we go through the rest of this video. Some parts of this video, we're gonna walk around some of the tools and features that you can toggle on and off in Microsoft Teams that help enhance your training, but a lot of this is gonna be the abstract conversation around using this space to conduct your training, how to organize your users to get familiar with it and create a live space for training to happen at your organization. So stay tuned for that. The first one I wanna call out is putting it into the Teams app in Microsoft. This is a pretty straightforward one. It's pretty easy to take because everyone probably has teams at your organization. Everyone has it and everyone is using it. They're using projects within teams. So creating a training team in your team space kind of puts it next to all of the projects that they're already doing if they're using teams today. Now when my staff is going to teams to do projects and do their daily work, they can click right over to this training and development team and see all of these different areas for training. That actually brings me to my next principle, which is breaking out your topics for training across different channels for your team. It's not just one big bucket of training that you're doing. You may wanna do different training for different departments or different use cases. Maybe there's frequently occurring training. Not only does breaking out your training topics into different channels help your users navigate to those training areas faster, but it also helps give them compartmentalized spaces to chat with each other, upload documents, maybe retrieve documents from those areas, and just gives them a general place to check in between training sessions. So this next principle is all about deciding on our cadence for training and setting up a training schedule for all the different types of training that you do at your organization. Scheduling training frequently reinforces forces to users that you're serious about it and that it's going to be happening throughout the year. These channels give you an opportunity to publish when training is happening, how frequently it's happening, things like when it's mandatory or how often that they need to repeat training. So you can communicate all of that in these Teams channels and help your users get alerted to when training is happening and when they need to pay attention to those opportunities. So another pro tip that I wanna bring up here is about plugging awareness about this training team on other platforms at your organization. So if your employees are using SharePoint or email, sending out some sort of distribution about where this training team is goes a long way towards meeting your staff where they're at and getting them plugged into the training. So while we're talking about scheduling our training, let's talk about actually creating the event of training. Right now in Microsoft, you can probably create an event no problem and invite a bunch of people to it and just conduct that event like any other meeting. But we really want to promote here is the creation of webinars. You should really consider creating webinars for your training events because it does things like create a publishing site where people can register for that event. You can follow that registration and you can customize some of the meeting options a little bit further and use these as your go-to bare bones structure for conducting training working sessions. One of my favorite things about these webinars is that setting up the registration page gives me the chance to add additional questions so that when people are coming to register for the training, I can ask them who they are, when they registered, maybe what their job title is, what they're looking forward to about learning at the training, or maybe something that they need worked on during the training session. And all this stuff helps me get alignment with the people who are coming to my training session. Another common pro tip that I've seen is forecasting out your training ahead in the calendar year and batch posting many links to the same type of training that may be happening frequently. This gives your users a chance to pick the one that works for them and is more likely to get them to come to the training. It's important to note the difference between webinar options and team meeting options. By default on a webinar, the mic and camera is turned off for the attendees. You can only do meeting chat while the meeting is happening, so you don't get into that annoying chat after the meeting has happened. And it automatically records and transcribes the meeting for you. So now we know where the training's happening, 
We know when the training is happening, but what about all the resources that you're gonna use to conduct the training during your FaceTime? We should talk about where to put those next. The reality is good training goes beyond face-to-face -face time. You already have all these resources and you shouldn't keep them right in your OneDrive. You should probably move them over into this training team, into these channels. Deciding to post some of this content ahead of a training se session may give somebody a leg up on the training before it happens. It may give them a better idea of what the training is for. You may have some self-taught learners that learn differently by reviewing the material on their own. Giving them the opportunity and the access to these resources is critical towards getting them to engage in the training and follow up with a lot of the content after the training has already happened. Also, this training team also acts as a really great archive for you to store those documents so that users know they can search through the folder structure in each of these channels, they can run a search on the training team, they can ask for where the training is right within these channel posts. It's all about giving the users access and having some of these people who are self-starters know how to get around this tool so that they can find the content that they need. Teams makes it really easy for you to autoload all of these files by posting them right into the channel chats for your training topics. So when I upload a file into these human resource channel, it goes to the human resource folder in my SharePoint site. Perhaps even more importantly, you can choose to publish your transcripts and your meeting recordings for these working sessions to this training team as well. So you could archive living recordings of your actual training sessions right within this team also. So now that we've done all the setup for our training, let's cover some tips about how to make the face-to-face -face time really impactful for your users. The first thing is to let your users drive the meeting. I can't tell you how many training sessions that I've been on where I'm clicking around too quickly and I'm speaking too quickly, maybe even in this video. <laughs> I had to add that. <laughs> this not only helps reinforce what you're training to that specific user, but it shows the other people on the call that someone new is doing it, which is way more impactful when they see some third party instructor like me clicking around like crazy and not showing something the right way. The other slight change I've seen at the end of training sessions is to get rid of that question and answer slide at the end of your PowerPoint. It's good to just tell people they're now champions in the space, they've learned a lot of material, kind of bolster them up a little bit and kind of charge them with alerting to others at the organization that training is happening and help them be champions of training moving forward. Really the secret behind setting up good training at your organization and conducting training is to set up the environment first. Decide where your boundaries are for training. Categorize your types of content and organize your users and centralize and direct them all to a team space or something similar. All of that stuff is key to fostering a good training experience that you can grow and customize as you learn more about how you wanna do training at your organization. So this is a little bit different type of video than we've done previously on this channel. I'm interested to know if any of you guys are running training at your organization and if you found some of this stuff helpful or if you've got any of your own tips and tricks, we definitely encourage you to comment below and tell us what you think. 